Hello everyone and welcome to Adopting City Events and Embracing Interoperability. My name is Andrea Frittoli. I work for IBM as an open source advocate. I live in Wales, I enjoy the wind as you can see from the picture. Um, I'm the co-founder and maintainer of CD Event Project. And I serve the CDF as well as a chair for the TOC and the governing and member of the governing board. So today I'll talk a little bit about CD, uh, sorry, uh, software factory and interoperability issues within. And then I will introduce CD events and talk about the state of adoption, what's new in the project um, and roadmap ahead. But let's start with the software factory. I mean, um, this is Silicon, so probably you're familiar with uh, building software in some way or another. Uh, this is a very simple case where you start from SCM, software configuration management, you host your source code there, you build it, put some artifacts into an artifact registry, deploy, and then monitor the result. And already for this very simple case, um, you will need a combination of tools to work together to achieve this result. And you're probably as well familiar with the fact that in most cases, things are a bit more complicated than that. So you may have multiple components that needs to be built and combined into another component. You probably have uh, multi-stage deployments, different target environments. Um, and then you often have requirements for additional requirements related to things like auditing, security, approvals and compliance. And so to achieve all these requirements, you will need more and more tools to com combine together. And what it happens often is that you need to start building these small bits of blue code, I call it, that make things fit together. And the more tools and more complicated things are, the more of this glue code you have to write, but you also have to maintain it, right? And this does not really scale very well. So it becomes, there is an attrition, it becomes very more expensive to onboard new services, to try out new things. So there is a trend that's emerged in the past few years. It's internal development platforms, so kind of larger companies, they started saying, well, let's find a good solution for this company-wise. So they started building platform internally, um, where they exposed these services to the development team within uh, the company through some dev portal or APIs. But also in the internal development platform, you still have some of the issues that we mentioned before. And especially if the IDP team invests effort in integrating a certain number of specific tools, that creates a kind of lock-in effect because they don't want to take on board new tools that they need to integrate and maintain one extra tool. But this can downgrade the developer experience on the other side. Also, all these tools uh, produce data, but the way they produce data may be not consistent one with another. You may expect certain data to be produced but not be there. So you may end up having missing or broken data. And this data is key to produce some of other services like auditing, security, and compliance. Another issue is that every single tool often comes with its own dashboard. So you're creating, again, not an ideal development experience for your developers because you have multiple dashboards that they have to switch through to see what's going on in, in the software factory. So a lot of requirements. Luckily, there are a lot of tools uh, to address those. This is from the CD Foundation landscape. Um, but there are some consequences, I was saying, in having a lot of tools uh, with glue code and risk and, and so forth. And uh, to link back to what Daisy was saying, today uh, the CDF announced the state of CI CD report. And there are some interesting insight there about the consequences and implication in terms of lack of interoperability and what happens to develop DevOps metrics when using multiple tools. So I recommend there is, it's not as pretty as uh, Daisy's QR code, but it works as well. <laughs> All right, so um, we have some interoperability issue in the software factory. And because of that, uh, back in 2021, uh, we created this project called CD Events, which is a common specification for continuous delivery events. 
And here with continuous delivery, I don't mean continuous deployment, I mean uh, the entire life cycle of software starting from inceptions, ideas, to coding, development, and so forth, all the way down to production and monitoring. The project, yeah, we started in 2021. It's incubated with the CD Foundation since 2022. And so what does that uh, help us with? What does it happen to, to our software factory? So in this diagram, I brought back the original pipeline. And you can imagine here um, a use case where you have maybe multiple build tools that you're using. Some of your teams prefer or have experience using Jenkins. Some other um, use Tekton for their pipelines. So if both tools, they are able to consume CD events as triggers and produce CD events telling the world what they're doing, then in this diagram, you can include both tools and everything else will continue working. And the same goes for deployment, for instance. You may be using GitOps and I think some, some Organization prefer uh, Flux, others will prefer Argo CD or other solutions. But again, if you want to build automation uh, on top of a deployment happening, you have to do different integration if you have different tools. But if all those tools declare the deployment that they are doing for CD events, then you can do that implementation once. And the other thing, um, so you reduce the need for glue code and you can spend more time in focusing and providing a better development experience, and more interesting features, and better DevOps metrics. So actually providing more business values in your DevOps setup. And you, uh, the other thing is um, with all these tools that you can use for inter all these data, sorry, these events that you can use for interoperability, you can also collect it in what we call an evidence store, and you can build services on top of that. And in terms of evidence store, this is really key to help building supply chain security features, which is a very important focus for your supply chain uh, in these days. So if you want to answer questions like, where is this piece of code deployed? This is really important because if there is a new vulnerability which is announced and you want to know, oh, actually, am I using that code in my deployments? If you have all the data uh, stored in your evidence stores, you can answer those kind of questions. You can uh, find out how a certain piece of code was built uh, through auditing uh, the data in your evidence store. On top of that, you can use that data to build DevOps metrics that can tell you how long does it take to run your workflow, where are the points where it's going slow, where are the points where are issues, and you can focus your effort in optimizing your metrics that way. Uh, last and not least, um, you can use this data to present a consistent view to your developers about what's going on in your environment across tools. So you don't have to keep switching between dashboard to get an idea of what is going on. And in the context of IDP, similarly, um, if we introduce uh, CD events, the attrition that we had before with changing tools, um, it's reduced because of the standard interface that we have there. So if you build an IDP using a certain build tool, and then a team asks, actually, we want you to support that other build tool, as long as that build tool uh, supports CD events, there is much less attrition in introducing it. Um, so I mentioned consistent data that uh, applies for IDP as well and single dashboard. The other thing um, that we believe that with CD events, we can actually promote collaboration from open source. Like I mentioned a few times, a single dashboard. If you have a um, very varied uh, type of data sources coming from different tools and different combinations, it's always different in different organization. It's really hard to collaborate in open source to build something that is useful to everyone because everyone has different setup. But if you have like a common format with an evidence store that is shared uh, across the companies, then you can start to collaborate and building this kind of tooling. Oh, and we at City Events, we also uh, started collaborating with uh, Canoe, which is an initiative of a number of organizations that are working on IDP. And they're very interested in adopting CD Events as a way to provide this interoperability layer uh, within their um, software. All right. Um, 
I wanted to uh, go a little bit deeper into CD event specifically. CD event is made of a specification. Um, so a number of documents that describe the structure and format of events in different areas, ranging from orchestration, so Python orchestration, builds, artifacts, SEM, uh, all the way down to incidents, testing. Tickets is one of the new ones, and we are working on approvals as well. Then we have bindings, which describes how a seed event is transported over the network, and our binding, favorite preferred uh, binding is cloud events, which is a CNCF standard for uh, messaging. And we have implemented SDKs to help integrate CD events in the various tools, and we support four languages for now, uh, but we are very looking forward to add uh, more languages as well as needed. And we also benefit from a great community. Uh, you can see a few of the names there, uh, logos of companies that are contributing, contributing to and adopting CD events. And as a Call to actions, I mean, if you're in the, this room and you're a DevOps engineer, we'd really love to uh, hear about and learn your uh, pain points in terms of interoperability, because we really want to be shared focused on addressing those. If you're a maintainer of a tool, uh, we'd love for your tool to adopt CD events and help you in doing that. So yeah, reach out uh, to us for that. If you're a DevOps vendor, I would like you to consider that actually adopting CD events, implementing CD events in your tool um, helps uh, people, uh, users, integrate your offering with other tools that they will need anyways to have a complete software factory. So it's actually very beneficial. And if you're just here because you love DevOps and interoperability, please join us uh, in the CD events community. Okay, I promised some updates in terms of adoptions. We focus, of course, first on uh, CDF projects. So we have a plugin for Jenkins, we have Spinnaker implementation, we have Tecton can consume uh, CD events and we have an experimental controller to produce them. We work with a number of CNCF projects as well, um, like we have implementation for TestCube, which is a test framework, Flux, Argo CD uh, for producing events for the notification. Uh, but we had a lot of discussion with the community. They're very interested in also starting to consume CD events. And Harbor, which is a container artifact registry, also the CNCF. Other projects that implemented uh, CD events are JReleaser, Java release tool, Guac.sh, uh, Guac which is uh, at the OpenSSF. And we are uh, having conversation with the Artilis community and update CLI tool. And uh, this is just um, an example of a POC we're working on where you could see all these tools working together. We are building um, a webhook adapter as part of our community, which allows to translate different uh, events from different SEMs, your GitHub, GitLab, uh, Git, and so forth into a common language. So you can use them um, to trigger Tecton or Jenkins or any build tool pipelines and so forth. So, um, and then in our, in our uh, POC, we would collect all the events that are also sent to a broker into something like an ArgoDB or some kind of graph database. And you can use that information then to build visualization. We did some POC using Grafana, but you can, uh, there are also other tools that you can use. And you can use the software supply chain uh, part for collecting events uh, from Guac or from other tools like Rotilius when it's supported in the future. And in this process, we had successes and challenges. I mean, we started back in 2021 uh, with a handful of people. And um, it's not easy to grow the community. It requires continuous effort, outreach, advocacy, you know. Um, and one of the things that we learned, I was mentioning before, addressing specific pain points. So you really need to go listen to the people, what is the problem they have, and try to, to address that. We have not reached yet widespread adoption. We have a number of tools that have already adopted. For CD events to shine, we really need to have as many tools as possible uh, implementing uh, this. Another uh, challenge that we encounter is a bit a cultural one, especially with some of the vendors. They have the feeling that uh, interoperability will harm them. So it will actually give users an easy way to switch to another vendor um, as opposed to keeping the users because of the quality of their offering and making it working nicely with other tools. <clears throat> so 
So challenges, successes, and success and lessons learned in, in collaborations I wanted to mention. So um, we, win, we will not be successful in isolation. We need to work with the other communities. Uh, so we are looking out always all the time for other people that are doing similar things or related things. So we are working with the open telemetry community. Um, they want to standardize semantics for pipeline observability. Uh, I mentioned Canoe already, and we also work with the value stream management interoperability group that they have similar interoperability questions in their space. Okay, a small announcement, announcement about city events. So just last week, uh, we released our city events 0.4 release with a uh, bunch of great new features. Um, I don't want to get too technical, but linked event allows you to uh, do better things like visualizing uh, your workflow, fast filtering old events and better connecting old events and doing things like audit trade uh, nicely. We introduced ticket events to bring interoperability in that space, as well as custom events uh, with like more uh, the ability to refine the schemas and introduce custom types for tools that need that. We also added to the uh, artifact events, we introduced the SBOM, that was key for instance with integration with uh, GUAC, um, and we introduced new predicates about artifacts. If you want to learn more about the release, there is a QR code. Again, sorry I'm not able to produce pretty QR codes, but should work. <laughs> and you can read more about the release there. And we have a few things in store for 2024 and beyond. So new features that we plan for the specification. I mentioned approvals before. We want to have composition and releases for more complex uh, software setup. Um, in terms of software, I mentioned the webhook adapter. We have a visualization POC that we are building. We want to build more SDKs and a link service to help like uh, link and maintain the context across your workflow. There are a couple of proof of concept that we are building and we're looking for contributors as well. And in terms of tools, we want to complete the POCs that we have ongoing. We want to complete the work with Harbor, with Argo, Argo CD, sorry. And we have a number of tools in our wish list, uh, but this is just some of them like Ortelius, Dagger, uh, Captain Screwdriver, Shipwright, and many more. Um, so everyone is really welcome. Just to summarize, um, there is a lack of standardization in the continuous delivery space, which means that we have complexity and costly integrations, a risk of inconsistent and incomplete data, and ultimately developer fatigue as well. And so these CD events is a common specification for continuous delivery events. And that brings standardization in the space, flexibility, which leads to better developer experience, and also puts, a, puts us in a better uh, stance or better supply chain security stance through data that we can collect. All right, um, that was everything I had today. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I'll be around in the hallway track today and tomorrow. And here are some references. The QR code is for the slides. <laughs>